What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to take a look at setting up PS5 Remote Play on the ROG Ally, which is pretty much setting it up on any Windows handheld or PC, really. I use this on my desktop and elsewhere, and I remote play a lot with Xbox and PlayStation, but PS5 is particularly difficult because of like the touchpad and that type of thing. So there are a few caveats when it comes to streaming this to something like the Ally, but let's go ahead and get into it here and the setup, and we'll go over all kinds of stuff in here. Now, one of the first things is we're going to need to grab things like Chiaki. We're going to need our special ID from PlayStation. We're going to have to get that. And there's another tutorial I'm going to point you guys to later in the video for something as well. But right here, we want to grab this version of Chiaki to put on our ROG Ally. And this allows you to, if you're docked using like a DualSense controller, you can actually use those haptics and stuff like that. Um, so it's a good version to grab. Now, we also need our PSN uh id so basically we're going to use our psn username to get two ids that we need one of them's for setting up another app we're not getting into here the other one is for chiaki which you see here on the bottom encoded id for chiaki so we're going to use that one when it gets to registering our ps5 the other thing is this is for in-home network only if you want to be able to stream your ps5 away from home on something like your ally or steam deck and use chiaki for that there's a great tutorial over here from overkill gaming who has already done such a good job of showing how to set this up i don't need to get into that i don't do remote play away from home very often so i'm going to point you guys to that if that's something you want to get into this focuses on in-home network now let's go over here and we're going to extract the chiaki uh, folder that we downloaded and then I'm going to go ahead and move that. So it's going to put it in my downloads folder. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to go ahead and cut that and move it over to my desktop because there's not really an install with this uh, app. It's more like just extract and run it. So go ahead and put that over here on my desktop. Rename this if you want to shorten that up, whatever you want to get into. So let's open up our folder, open up the next and we'll go down here to Chiaki application. We'll go ahead and get that opened up and we'll go ahead and get started. Now, this warning you'll only get the first time. So we'll click more info, run anyway, and this will open up. We'll click allow. And my PS5 is already has remote play enabled in its settings, which is why it's already showing up here. That's something you might want to do ahead of time. We're going to get into that later in the video as well. In our settings here, though, you can see it's already set up for all these key settings. So if you're using keyboard, this works just fine as well. But it also works great using just the handheld controls on the ROG Ally, um, and it works great for that. You also have the dual sense support here I was talking about, enabling the haptics and stuff in this version. Um, we have T for touchpad here, so we are able to toggle the touchpad like a click on and off, which helps a lot. We're going to set up shortcuts to that. We'll get more into that. The resolution, we can also do 1080p here for uh, Chiaki, 60 FPS. And you have bitrate, which is automatic set, but you can also type in your own numbers, adjust this to get the best experience for your particular home network. Everybody's setup is going to be completely different. Um, I'm going to leave things to default just for the sake of this setup in this video. Uh, H.265, PS5 only. You can set up for PS4 here as well. You can go with none here. You can also go with the D, uh, 3D11VA or the DVXA2. Um, mess around with encoders if you have trouble with the games. You can start off with none if you would like to there. Now, as far as getting into registering the PS5, before we do that, I want to go over here and do those shortcuts that we're going to need when we're inside of Remote Play. So I'm going to go into my gamepad mode here just in general for my global settings, and you'll see I already have the F11 key set as a shortcut to my back button or my menu button. We're going to leave that that way. We need that to toggle. We're also going to set up left trigger and left button here. Our left trigger, I'm going to go ahead and set up for a keyboard shortcut, which is going to be to escape. That actually brings up our PlayStation button menu. And the next thing we're going to do is set up for our left bumper. We're going to set that up to be our T shortcut, which is actually going to be for uh, clicking the touchpad to uh, emulate that uh, action. Now, the big thing is you cannot emulate the swipes. If you're playing a game that requires swiping, that's where you're going to run into being stuck. But now we have our F11 key, our escape key, and our T key all bound here, and we want these for shortcuts once we get into streaming. Now, the other thing here is if you want to add Chiaki to your uh, armory crate, we can go in here to add. It should pop up in the list. If not, restart. Click done. If you don't want that to stay just the gray box, of course, you can go in and change that. Press X to get into its properties. Scroll all the way down to edit game info. Go all the way over to the right to edit. And I've already downloaded another picture. You're going to have to download a Chiaki logo or a picture. I've already grabbed one up. I'll go into my downloads folder and apply that. And that'll keep things looking nice and neat. So now I can select 
uh, my green Shiaki logo here. We'll click done and that'll change that up. Just a nice little extra if you want to do that and keep things cleaner looking. So let's go ahead and open up Chiaki and get the PS5 set up to stream here in home. I'm going to go ahead and double click on here and we're going to have to register our PS5, which is where that information is going to come into play. So my console here, PS5, and remember that account ID for Chiaki we looked up earlier. So I'm going to go over there and copy that, come back in here, paste it in. And then the next thing we're going to need is the pin from the PS5. You get a temporary pin number for your PS5 each time uh, you set up a new uh, device connection. So go on the PS5 in the settings. We're going to come down here into system, come down to remote play. Enable remote play, of course, is already on for me. I'm going to click link device and that's going to give me my pin. We're going to take that. We're going to go back over to the ROG ally here and we're going to type that pin in where it says pin at the bottom and then register will highlight. We can click register. And now our PS5 is registered and connected. I only have to do that one time here and then we will be good to go. So I'll go ahead and double click this just to go ahead and do the first connection. Make sure everything is working out properly. It should default uh, out of full screen at first and then you can always use your shortcut uh, that I'll show you to go into full screen. So there we go. Everything's working great. Let's switch where you can see a little better here. We got Spider-Man 2 uh, brought up on screen and I'm going to use my shortcut button in the back and those macros that I set up. Now, if it's not working for you, make sure you go in and change this to the gamepad mode. It often will default back to auto or desktop and it won't work. You go to gamepad and uh, then everything will work great. So we'll use our first shortcut here uh, with our shortcut button and our view button here, our menu button, back button, whatever you want to call it. And that'll toggle my full screen that I've set up. I'm also going to use that bumper. That gives me that uh, touchpad click to go in and out there as a shortcut. And then my trigger is our PlayStation button. So I can do everything except for the swiping, uh, which can stop you in some games, unfortunately. And I had it stop me in Spider-Man 2 until I figured out the devs put open camera gadget and open the app um, in game in the menu. So these are critical. You need to be able to do this and they're swipe left and swipe up to do it in the game on the dual sense. But fortunately, um, the, the creators here of Spider-Man two did put it in our start menu. So I'm able to get past that idea of needing to be able to swipe. But in some games like last of us, there's like an area where you have to strum a guitar and stuff like that. You, you can't get past it. There's just, if you have to swipe and there's no way around it, that's the only caveat here. Other than that, I get fantastic streaming quality. Input latency is really good. It's not always spot on, but I haven't even adjusted and tweaked this in yet like I used to have it uh, since restoring my ally. So uh, adjusting my bit rate and all that kind of thing I haven't even messed with yet or my encoder. So uh, yeah, still just running here pretty default. It's a fantastic experience and a great way to stream to PS5 and actually get just about everything working here on something like the ally and handheld mode rather than having to connect the dual sense or DualShock 4 controller, which if you're docked, alleviates all of these problems. You can con connect one of those controllers and get past all of that. But for true handheld, this is what you're going to need to get into. And this has worked great for me for a long time. A great way to stream the PS5 to something like this, like the Ally or other Windows devices. But anyways, guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.